Zacchaeus and Bartimaeus. In our last story, the sting of death was thwarted when Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. With tears in his eyes and a booming voice, Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb and into life. Now we learn about two men who followed Jesus, one a rich tax collector with a checkered past, the other a blind beggar with an inability to take no for an answer, inspired by the Gospels. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In our last episode, we heard of the miraculous resurrection of Lazarus, whom Jesus commanded to rise up and walk out of the tomb, despite the fact that he had been dead for four days. It was an amazing show of the power of God over death, that Jesus and Jesus only can raise the dead. Today, we're going to see how Jesus encounters two different kinds of men but he opens each of their eyes. Both men will be offered an opportunity for a new life of purpose as they follow the Lord. So let's listen to God's word. Jesus was passing through the city of Jericho. A sea of people thrashed him about, struggling to catch a glimpse of Jesus. The crowds were becoming so many in number that one could barely even point out Jesus in the masses. Among the throng of people was a tax collector named Zacchaeus. Jesus intrigued him. He wanted to see what Jesus was doing. He wanted to hear what Jesus was saying, and he was willing to do so at all costs. He was a small man, therefore had no way of seeing Jesus unless he got creative. So as Jesus was walking, Zacchaeus ran ahead to climb a sycamore tree. He dangled below the branches and lifted himself up. Then, just as he was beginning to get a good glimpse of Jesus, he fell to the ground. A few branches cracked underneath Zacchaeus. He rolled his toes to make sure there was no damage, then he sprung back up to his feet and climbed the tree again. This time, he lost track of Jesus. The crowd was so large that Jesus seemed lost. Then a voice came from the ground below. Zacchaeus, the voice shouted. The tax collector darted his head in every direction, trying to pinpoint who was calling his name. Zacchaeus, the voice yelled again. What are you doing up there? He darted his eyes directly below him to see Jesus waving up at him. Come down from there. I need to stay at your home today. How does he know my name? Zacchaeus thought to himself. How would Jesus know who I am? Zacchaeus' attempt to climb down was clumsy and overexcited. He got his leg caught in a branch, tore a part of his robe, and got leaves stuck in his beard. However, he could not be more excited to host Jesus in his home. The small tax collector grinned cheek to cheek. As they were walking, Jesus could hear a few people grumbling and whispering. He is a guest in the house of a sinner, they hissed to themselves. Zacchaeus could feel the judgment of others as he led Jesus to his home. Was he worthy to house Jesus? Was he a good enough man? These questions raced through his mind. Doubt and fear welled up within him, but then he remembered some of the teachings he heard from Jesus. He remembered the parable of the pearl in a field. He remembered the sermon on the mount. So Zacchaeus decided to take action. He stood up before Jesus and raised his cup. My Lord, Zacchaeus declared, I have decided to give half of my goods to the poor. And if there is anything I took by greed or defrauding, I will restore it to that person fourfold. Jesus raised his cup to Zacchaeus. Today salvation has come to your household, Jesus said, for the Son of God has come to seek and save those that are lost. The next day Jesus was walking into Jericho. The gates were wide and filled with vendors trying to sell things for an approaching Passover. Jesus spoke to some of the people who were walking beside him. Begging at the side of the gate was a blind man named Bartimaeus. He could hear a stirring in the crowds beside the gate and asked what the commotion was. It is Jesus of Nazareth, the man replied. Bartimaeus stood to his feet and ran as fast as he could toward the crowd. The blind man knocked down fruit carts and broke baskets under his feet. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, he shouted. Some men in the crowd shoved him to the ground, but Bartimaeus was determined. He burst through the men and flailed through the crowds. Some others tried to hold him by his robe, but he simply threw it off. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me! Bartimaeus roared. Jesus nodded to his disciples. 
go and get him for me. So the disciples brought him near. Bartimaeus was bruised from the crowd trying to shut him up, but on his face he wore the largest grin in all of Israel. Jesus matched his grin and said, What can I do for you? Bartimaeus fell to his knees. Please, Rabbi, I desire to see the skies again. I desire to see the waters, the trees, and the birds. Please restore my sight to me. Jesus held the man to his feet. Go your way, Bartimaeus. Your faith has made you well. And in that instant, the beggar's sight was restored. Colors, shapes, and movements surrounded him. Light shone brightly, and the figure of Jesus' smile slowly came into focus. Bartimaeus did not return to his home. He followed Jesus. There was no one else he would rather see. Today in our story of Jesus, he is in the city of Jericho. This town is known for the great Old Testament battle in which God brought the walls down to give his people victory. But today, our reading tells not of physical walls, but of spiritual walls that come down, the walls that separate us from God and each other. First, we meet a man of small stature and even smaller regard for his community. His name, this wee little man, is Zacchaeus, and he is a hated tax collector. All tax collectors were disliked by the Jews in that day as they were working for the oppressive Roman government, and they were taking a cut for themselves. They used to charge exorbitant taxes and skim off the top for their own personal gain. They were considered traitors and cheaters and thieves. Zacchaeus was one such man. His dishonesty and deceit made him very wealthy, but of course, he was not respected. In fact, he was hated. And yet we discover that he wanted to catch a glimpse of Jesus as he was passing through his town. But he had a big problem, and that was his little stature. And he had no friends to help him get through the crowd or see over the crowd. There was little hope that he could ever catch a glimpse of Jesus among the throngs of people who were lining the streets. It was like a parade as Jesus came through. But Zacchaeus has a plan. He climbs up the branches of a sycamore tree to get a vantage point where he can see Jesus going by. And to his great surprise, when Jesus comes his way, the Lord doesn't walk by. He looks up and calls him by name and says, Zacchaeus, come down for I'm going to stay at your house today. What an amazing turn of events for this man, and no doubt for everyone in the crowd. Can't you just hear the grumblings among the religious people and their followers, and also all the townspeople, that Jesus would pay attention to this hated man? How could this dishonest, deceitful man manage to get an audience with Jesus? And why would Jesus associate with a man like this guy? Zacchaeus excitedly came down the tree and ran to prepare his home to receive the Lord. It was an encounter that changed the rest of his life. Zacchaeus stood and told the Lord that he was going to make right what he had done to defraud people of their money. And not just that, he was going to give half of his great wealth to the poor. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, salvation has come to your house. For the Son of Man, Jesus, has come to seek and to save the lost. This is a very important statement that Jesus made. In effect, it is his mission. It is his mission statement. This is why Jesus came, to seek and to save the lost. So, the meeting of this man and Jesus was a personal encounter with the Son of God that changed the heart of a very broken man forever. When Jesus saw him, he called him by name and Zacchaeus' spiritual eyes were open to the need, his need, of a Savior. His heart was changed, and his life was changed, and he began to give to others out of generous gratitude to God. Now, remember this about salvation, what it means to be saved from our sins. We don't do this for ourselves. This is the gift of God. But once we become believers and followers of the Lord, our hearts and our lives are transformed. If anyone is in Christ, the Bible says, he is a new creation. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And when we come to faith in Jesus, we follow him and become more like him by the power of the Holy Spirit. Next, we hear about a man named Bartimaeus who heard Jesus was coming to his town. 
And the man sat by the roadside in darkness. He was desperate for someone to help, so he began to cry out again and again to Jesus. And those all around him tried to shut him down, shut him up, but he didn't listen. He kept saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Hearing his cries, Jesus asked for the man to be brought to him. And then in Mark 10, verse 51, he asked an unusual question. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? This man was blind, so his need was obvious. But still, Jesus asked, what do you want? Why would he do that? Jesus wanted to know if this man was believing in him, trusting in him. God is pleased when we show faith by asking for what we need. He, of course, knows what we need before we ask. But when we ask, we are showing faith. This is what happens when we pray. We are trusting God. The blind man shows that he had faith and asked for his sight to be restored. And Jesus said, your faith has made you well. Just as it was with Zacchaeus, this man's response in faith brought him restoration and the healing of his eyes and the opening of his heart. His eyes were open and so was his heart. And he began to follow Jesus then and there and his life was transformed for the glory of God. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that like Zacchaeus, we were lost without you, but you found us. You called our name and we came to you. And like that blind man Bartimaeus, we could not see you, but we believed in you. The world says seeing is believing, but we know you say believing is seeing. So, Lord, we look to you and in faith, we trust you and follow you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. You can download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life, just like over 20 million people have done to this date. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you know and love, because by sharing this message of the Word of God, you can make an eternal difference in someone's life. And I want to encourage you to go to jackgraham.org. That's me at jackgraham.org. 